Hey what's up guys, my name is Sven, welcome on this channel. In this video we take a look about the wheel angle sensor. I like to give you an example how you can install the sensor into a John Deere 6800. And after that we take a look at the wiring diagram. I would say we take a look at the front axle. Here you can see the wheel angle sensor and you see it's parallel mounted to the steering cylinder. It is a 5 kilo ohm linear potentiometer with an accuracy of 0.05% and a protection class of IP67. It has an aluminium housing and the sensor costs about 40 to 50 euros. Basically all potties with a value around 5 kilo ohms are suitable. Why I choose this linear potty and not a rotary potty has several reasons. Well, the design of the sensor fits good into this tractor, so it was easy to assemble. As you can see here, it's simply attached on the hydraulic lines of the steering cylinders with zip ties. This may look a little bit provisionally, but the zip ties are not sliding so easily on the aluminium housing of the sensor as a metal clip would be. But this is not the reason because I bought a linear potty and not a rotatory potty. With the parallel mounting on the steering cylinder, you get a long mesh away from 210 millimeters. So the result is a higher scanning accuracy. With a rotary potty, you have in the best case about 80 degrees available. The linear potty seems much more attractive to me. On the other side, I don't know how the program compensates measuring issues when you full turn the steering. Here you can see a small picture to illustrate the problem. Because the curved inner wheel always travels a smaller radius than the outer wheel because the axle geometry. Of course there are also disadvantages. Not every tractor has enough space between the front axle and the engine. As a result, it's not even possible to installate a linear potentiometer. Now we take a look at the attachment of the steering linkage. I also have to find out that the assembly was not so easy that I thought at my first try. I wanted to mount the front of the sensor at the end of the steering cylinder, but I didn't consider that the steering cylinder turns when it drives in and out. So I had to recheck this idea. Now I had to use such a heating clamp on the steering linkage. Also such a frame is much more susceptible for dirt or flying stones than a rotation potentiometer below the front fender. Here is a picture. I would say we take a look at the other side to the electric connection cables. On this side we see now the plug with the cables. On the steering sensor is glued a small diagram which shows the contact pins. Here is the connection diagram, nicely recognizable. To the connection you can say it doesn't matter which of the two pins, 1 and 3, you use for 5 volt and ground. It's only important that the signal is connected to pin 2. For the 5 volt power supply it's important that you use the 5 volt Arduino output and not the input voltage. In this case here, there are two cables connected to ground, which is needed if you use an AD converter. With the second ground, you can compensate interference on the line. I used here an Ethernet cable because it has a shield. I just cut off the, the connector, but maybe you have already a cable with a shield. The required connector with the pins are shipped with the potentiometer. All you have to do is connect it. I just mounted the sensor cable with zip ties on the hydraulic lines. And after that I changed to the electricity cable of the tractor. 
I go with the cable on the underside of the tractor about to the front of the cabin. And after then I change to the underside of the cabin and there you find the original cable inlet where you can go to the inside of the cabin. What you have to connect now in the box we will see at the wiring diagram. So I have drawn here a wiring diagram, such a similar diagram you will find also in the web. But I like to tell you that the diagram that you find in the web are not matched with the Arduino program. Here changed some of the digital input pins. Because I don't like to change every time the Arduino program, I draw such a wiring diagram and I wired every component like you see it here and it works perfect. I don't like to explain you now all the components here, just the components that we need for the wheel angle sensor. But for a quick info, down below here we find the step down converter from our input voltage from the tractor to our 5 volt. You have to adjust the 5 volt before you use it with this small screw on the potty otherwise you don't have the 5 volt on the output there's all the time something different they are not adjust um, at 5 volts when they are delivered on top of it we find the motor controller there you can connect um, what you have a steering motor or steering wells the work switch is for recording in the program and with the auto button you can start and deactivate the auto steering. That's the compass and the tilt sensor. For us important is the Arduino Uno, our microcontroller, the AD converter and the wheel angle sensor. So you have to connect everything with ground and 5 volt. So let us take a look about the Arduino Nano. So the 5 volt goes into VIN, not go into the 5 volt ground, you have to put on ground. The 5 volt here is for what I already said, the power supply for our wheel angle sensor. And that's here are our bus lines. The SCL and SDA and here is very important that we use these two analog inputs the A4 and the A5 good so far so at first we like to take a look at the wheel angle sensor so the power supply goes down here these 5 volts and we came in here so the power supply goes into the wheel angle sensor on pin 1. Normally it doesn't matter if you use pin 1 or 3 for the 5 volt, but I make the decision that I use pin 1 for 5 volt and pin 3 for ground. So that's here is our second ground line. That's the one who compensate the interference. And it is connected to the AD converter at pin A1. As we can see here the signal line goes to the pin A0 from the AD converter. It would be possible that we can work without the AD converter then we also don't need the second ground line and then you have to go with the signal line to one of the analog inputs of the Arduino. I think it's pin A0 but I'm not sure but I would not recommend this because with the long cable lines you are susceptible for interference and also um, what the name already told you the 16-bit AD converter has a resolution of 16-bit and the analog input of the Arduino Uno has only 10-bit resolution so you get a higher definition if you use the AD converter and the AD converter just costs a couple bucks 
to the connection of the AD converter, you have to connect it to the 5 volt to VDD. That's the same like in the Arduino, just a different assignment and to ground and also the two bus, the SCL and the SAD. The bus line is just a parallel line to all the devices that you like to connect to the Arduino. So if you have more like we have here with the tail sensor and the compass, so connect all together and that's it. Then we don't blow up the time frame for this video here. I will make a second part and in this part we're talking about how to program the Arduino and which settings you have to do in Egg Open GPS because Egg Open GPS allows you just a small window where you can adjust the wheel angle sensor. So let me know if you like this video and if you have any questions let me know. See you bye.